All right, thank you very much for keeping it here on Joy Sports, and we're bringing you one hour and 30 minutes of non stop action and sports as we look ahead to a big weekend right here on Joy Sports. The show is Sports Today and is only here on this channel. Uh, remember that you can send a message to my Facebook wall. One, uh, remember, it's Nathaniel Atta, Citizen Atta, alternatively 1760. And of course, uh, we're looking at the Black Maidens. Remember, the Black Maidens made history in Ghana women's football internationally by picking up a bronze medal at the last edition of the tournament, which was played in Azerbaijan. I'm talking about the FIFA and the 17 Women's World Cup. Well, they're going at it again, and they're beginning the campaign this weekend. And uh, so, what is your expectation of the black maidens are they going up to uh, the silver winning uh, place or probably to win the uh, ultimate position uh, let's uh, see how all of that goes of course in a group with uh, the likes of germany and that surely is going to be a very very tall order remember uh, that ghana had to play germany uh, again to win the uh, bronze medal from the last edition of the tournament so you send in your messages remember um, it's nathaniel atto citizen atto on facebook and um, let's start talking. Uh, Bayern Munich uh, have a little blot because uh, the man, Juli Hornes, who uh, was the president of the club, now is heading for jail for three years and six months for tax evasion. What does this tell us about... Um you know, uh, general practices in, in world football and what it will do to the image of the club. Juli Hones is a former uh, Germany striker as well, and um, he is now heading to jail for uh, tax uh, fraud or tax evasion. Well, let us also take a look at what's happening here in the Ghana Premier League. And uh, Amidal's professionals have parted ways with their coach, Shai Butanko, and of course, they will be going into uh, the weekend's uh, clashes with the new coach, Coach Kwame. And so, uh, how well do you think they're going to do? Uh, these plus other things and more right here on the show. We'll also be looking away from Ghana where, uh, you know, in the Europa League is very, very interesting action because over the last 24 hours we've seen some drama uh, on the touchline where the coach of Benfica and the coach of Tottenham Hotspur were engaged in a bit of a row. Remember that uh, Tottenham Hotspur now have a very difficult uh, run towards the next stage of the competition because they have lost 3-1 to um, Benfica. And uh, the coach uh, of Benfica, uh, you know, signaled uh, by the fingers that he had scored three goals to Tim Sherwood, who's coach of Tottenham Hotspur. And that was not taken very, very lightly at all by uh, Tim Sherwood. Uh, we'll be bringing you all of uh, those stories and more right here on the show. The reason why you have to stay right here. Remember that we're building up as well to the broadcast of uh, one match day of the first Capital Plus Premier League right here on Joy Sports in collaboration with Super Sport. All right, so I will do a round of commercials and immediately the newspapers. All right, so let's take a look at what is in the uh, graphic sports. We'll also bring you the Kotoko Express and the 90 Minutes newspaper. Well, it's the big battle at the Old Trafford, the Red Devils, uh, to hold the Reds. There we are. There we are. This is it. And it's Suarez up against... Uh, Wayne Rooney and uh, Bukum Banku apologizes to Prophet TV Joshua at Black Maidens to surprise the world again. And there's a picture of Fusei Nayumumuni. So that's what's on the front page. A quick look at the center spread and it's the man, Pedro. Pedro featured there on the lifestyle page. Up close and personal with him. And that's uh, Pedro and his sweetheart, uh, Carolina. The Barcelona star is described as the ambidextrous winger. What do you also think of him? Well, just take a read of the lifestyle segment. Let's quickly go to the center spread. And we've got action from Europe for you. Paris Saint-Germain dominating atletico madrid dominating Bayern munich dominating and of course barcelona dominating so manchester city out arsenal out ac milan out and uh, scenes from there uh, prominent among them is michael essien trying to uh, control a ball a mid-aerial ball there 
seen as one of the key pillars for Ghana's campaign at Brazil 2014. And um, let's also take a quick look at um, other stories. And uh, can Hearts bounce back against King Faisal? Accra Hearts of Oak has had a topsy-turvy time. And the Ghana Football Association is going to foot referee Che's uh, funeral. The bills for the funeral. Remember the referee Che was uh, lynched. Uh, basically suffered a mob attack, not necessarily lynched, but suffered a mob attack, uh, after which uh, he died uh, eventually. And so the league preview is there for you. That's the graphic sports for you. Let's take a quick look at the uh, Kotoko Express, where they're focusing on the game between Kotoko and Liberty Professionals. And it says, Sunday's big clash against Liberty. Kotoko to dazzle Accra fans. All right, so um, everybody is also mourning the death of uh, Jerry Asari, a former Accra representative of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. We also take a look at what's been going on in training. Kotoko gear up for the Accra invasion. And there it is, Asante Kotoko, at training at the Barra Stadium. And also on the back page, there's a story of how the uh, vetting for the National Chapters Council uh, chairmanship or leadership begins. And Prince Buffo says that the league is not over yet. Okay, so let's see how all of that goes. And uh, we take a look at the 90 Minutes newspaper. AC Milan is slammed for poor form. SN is hot. So Michael Essien is in focus on the front page of the uh, 90 Minutes newspaper. Take a look at that story as well. A quick run through what's on the back page. Now, Arsenal players caught doing the Akaida dance. Well, uh, this is one dance that originated from Ghana. And the Arsenal players will take a few uh, moments to do that dance as well. And uh, Nyantechi GFA Mon Jerry Asari. And uh, revealed, Kevin is the best African dribbler in Europe. Uh, do you agree with that? Well, send me a message, 1760, and get on my Facebook wall as well. So there are other stories there in the 90 Minutes newspaper which we can look at. Let's now quickly go into the business of the UEFA Champions League, after which we'll do a wrap of what happened in the Europa League as well. Juventus settling for a 1-1 draw. And of course, um, that game between Tottenham and Benfica. Tottenham losing 3-1 before their home fans at the White Hart Lane. And that surely is a very, very big deal and a big issue for them as they go away uh, again for another leg. And of course, it surely will be a very big challenge as well. A look at the fixtures. And... Um, there we are. It's Manchester City going away to Hull City and uh, Cardiff City playing Everton. Fulham will host Newcastle United, uh, Southampton play Norwich and uh, West Ham United go to Stoke City. Sunderland, they will host uh, Crystal Palace and of course Swansea play West Bromwich Albion. Chelsea go away to Aston Villa and uh, Manchester United will play Liverpool. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur, fresh from that defeat to Benfica in the Europa League, go up against Arsenal, who also dropped out of the UEFA Champions League. Who's your money on this weekend as we go into the La Liga? And um, it's Hetafe playing Granada and Celta Vigo going up against Levante, Rayo Vallecano playing Almeria. And the Malaga will play Real Madrid. And of course... Uh, the league leaders are going away to Malaga. Atletico Madrid, who also uh, put up a good display in the UEFA Champions League against uh, AC Milan, who play uh, Espanyol. Real Betis play Elche Barcelona, go up against Osasuna. And um, can Osasuna give us another surprise of the season again? Sevilla play Real Valladolid, and Valencia will play Real Sociedad. Athletic Bilbao will play Villarreal. 
All right, so um, this is the Italian uh, Serie A, and these are the games um, Inter Milan will go up against uh, Hellas Verona, Atlanta play Sampdoria, and uh, AC Milan, uh, Sule Montari, and uh, Michael Essien's AC Milan will play, some, uh, will play Parma, I beg your pardon, Lazio go to Cagliari, and Livorno play Bologna, while uh, Sassuolo play Catania. Chievo Verona will play Fiorentina, uh, who are also coming from a big draw in the Europa League. Uh, Genoa play Juventus, and Juventus lead the uh, league table of course uh, looking forward to retaining the title in Italy Torino play uh, Napoli and uh, Emmanuel Ajimambedou's Udinese go up against uh, AS Roma in another very very big tie all right so uh, we take a look at the Bundesliga fixtures and uh, I'm asking you on my Facebook wall what at all should Ghana learn or what should the football world learn from the uh, jailing of Yuli Honus all right let's um, quickly look at the fixtures for the weekend it's uh, Augsburg playing Schalke 04 uh, Kevin Prince Boateng Schalke 04 and uh, Borussia Dortmund play Munchen Gladbach and uh, Hertha Berlin face Hannover 96 TSG Hoffenheim play Mainz, while Braunschweig play Wolfsburg. And uh, Stuttgart go away to Werder Bremen. They'll be playing uh, Bre uh, Werder Bremen and Bremen. And of course, uh, Bayern Munich will play Bayer Leverkusen. And Leverkusen weren't able to go through in the UEFA Champions League as well. Bayern Munich, the defending champions, are in there. And that surely is going to be a cracker of a game. Hamburg play Nuremberg, while Freiburg play Eintracht Frankfurt. In France, uh, the focus will be on Marseille, where uh, they will play Stade de Reims. Andre Dede, are you expected to feature prominently in that game? Liu play Nantes, Ajaccio will play Guingam and uh, Galad. Evian Tonon Galad play Valenciennes. Bastia go away to Nice and uh, Sochaux uh, play Lorient. Toulouse play Stade de Reims. Montpellier will play Bordeaux. And Monaco play Olympique Lyonnais. And uh, that's going to be a very big game as well. Paris Saint-Germain, who are on fire with uh, Ibrahimovic, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic leading the pack, uh, will be playing Saint-Étienne. All right, so um, there is a lot to talk about when it comes to the FIFA World Cup in Brazil. Remember that uh, the man, uh, Jürgen Klinsmann, has already set uh, plans in motion. And luckily for him, the U.S. Uh, Premier League is uh, done. And uh, he's got all the time to prepare, uh, especially wanting to reverse that jinx that uh, Ghana or that, that you know, uh, stranglehold that Ghana has had over the U.S. Ah, okay. What do you make of this? The man uh, sets, uh, you know, all the preparations into gear and he wants to make a mark with the U.S. national team. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so we also focus on... Um, Ghana striker Abdul Majid Waris, who is also in some very good form, uh, performing very well, and uh, surely is being mentioned as one of the players who will definitely get an automatic pass into Coach Kwesi Apia's uh, lineup for the World Cup, the final 23 uh, players for the World Cup. Abdul Majid Waris has been talking about his career. Let's take a listen to him. Majid Waris has taken the world by storm since bursting onto the scene for the Black Stars. The Spartak Moscow striker who is currently on loan at French club Valenciennes formed an effective partnership with Black Stars captain Asamoah to power Ghana to a third successive World Cup qualification. Waris's form however took a dive with his move to Russia but appears to be rediscovering his form again on loan at Valenciennes. His current hot form is a joy to many Ghanaians as he will be relied upon at World Cup in Brazil.
originally I'm from, from the northern part of Ghana, Tamale, and that's where I was born and then raised up. And then, um, um, growing up, there was actually like, um, a, a really big challenge because um, because of like the football and then the education as well. And I was a little bit lucky because my dad had played football before and he was quite happy with me and he supported me with me some um, me with some kids and then all that. But he used to have a problem with me when I don't do like really well in school. So I think that was the only um, problem I was having with my dad. School days I used to like play lots of football for my for my school, um, which is like EP um, in Tamale, and then um, I play lots of I play lots of football there, and then that made me like popular in the school, and then um, everyone knows me, and then um, I was not very serious with my education in terms of education and then all that. But it came some time when I realized how very important education was. That was like when I joined the Right to Dream Football Academy um, because everyone was talking about <coughs> like how you can make it into like to being a professional and all that. But when I went to Right to Dream Football Academy, I realized how important education was and then how important like combining or uh, even like um, where I am now. I didn't actually go straight to like being a professional. I actually went to like UK to study and then play and then through that like I'm where I am now. So you can see I didn't go straight to professional, but I passed through like lots of different uh, channels to get to like what I wanted. All right, so Abdul Majid War is there, and um, let's just see uh, if finally he gets to play at the World Cup. And if he does, what kind of uh, impact are you expecting him to make in Coach Kwesia Pierre's team that will play in the uh, you know, World Cup? Ghana has dropped in the FIFA rankings. All right, so um, Ghana has uh, dropped. And uh, there's mixed results for Ghana on the ranking table as uh, the... Black Stars uh, gained and lost. In the uh, the Continental Logs. All right, so let's do some more stories here. And uh, the uh, spokesperson for the Ghana Football Association, Ibrahim Sanidara, says he's very, very confident about a possible, uh, a possible good performance for the Black Stars at the World Cup. And uh, Ibrahim Sanidara uh, says that he thinks that the, Ghana, uh, the Black Stars are just capable of uh, doing a great job at uh, Brazil uh, 2014. Let's also focus on some more here. And uh, goalkeeper Daniel Ajay, remember him? He is the under-20 uh, World Cup winning uh, goalkeeper. And uh, he says that uh, he has returned to training after a hernia operation and could be available in the next matches for the relegation threats inside. And of course, uh, goalkeeper Daniel Ajay has also not ruled out uh, the opportunity to uh, play in Coach Kwesi Apia's final 23 for the FIFA World Cup in Brazil. And uh, Ghana defender John Mensah, the ex-Black Stars captain, is thrilled with his debut for Nitra FC in their 2-0 defeat at home to uh, Slovan Bratislava. And uh, remember that John Mensah has had to sit out for a while trying to nurse an injury and now he says that uh, he is uh, back and ready to compete um, at the highest level let's also focus on Ghana international uh, uh, Jordan Ayu and uh, his uh, brother Andre is saying that his, uh, the player has gained enough confidence now and uh, saying it's showing especially in that game that was played between Ghana and Montenegro. So he says that my younger brother has gained a lot of experience. And you can expect comments like these, especially when uh, we're preparing to uh, know who will fit into that final 23 for Coach Kwesi Apea. 
and he believes that uh, Jordan Ayew can be scoring more goals, especially at his club side, so show uh, one of the determinant factors for entry into the team for the Mundial. And of course, Italian side Palma have handed uh, a trial to promising media youngster Jacob Apau. And so he has to impress at Palma, following which a decision will be taken on whether he will be signed on or not. Let's also take a look at um, striker Ani Adama Plange, who plays for Vitoria Gumaresh, and he has served a notice for the first time that he's no longer interested in playing for Burkina Faso and now wants to commit his future to Ghana. Now the Vitoria Gumaresh uh, striker. We'll have to go through the process, uh, the rather long process that the likes of Emmanuel Frimpong, uh, Kevin Prince Boating all went through to don the national jersey. And of course, Amidal's professionals have appointed uh, Kwame Sasu as their new coach. And uh, Fred Kwame Sasu will replace Tanko Shaibu, who was dismissed uh, for insubordination. Some of the issues also point towards uh, uh, low performance, especially after that big loss to Accra Hartsville at the Accra Stadium recently. So it means that uh, Amidal's professionals are going to go into the next match day with a new coach, uh, Coach Sasu. There are some text messages on my wall which I'd want to share with you. Prince Charles says that Bayern Munich's performance is great, but as far as Chelsea uh, is in this, trust me, they will not defend it. We are winning it again. Uh, I never miss sports today. Great show, Nat. Thank you very much, Prince Charles. Uh, Bismarck uh, says that, Nat, for the first time, I will go out with um, Manchester United to beat Liverpool since uh, Liverpool is a potential threat to our title ambitions. Now, Arsenal will lose this weekend and uh, Chelsea will triumph over Aston Villa. Uh, Jose and uh, Hazard will also be the player of the month and manager of the month, respectively, because they have no co-equals. Yeah. Now, uh, Haki Fifi Sam says, The Black Maidens will mesmerize the world at the Women's World Cup, and I think Ban can defend their Champions League trophy this season due to their performance this season too. Uh, Alaji Ahmed says that uh, that's unpardonable. Yuli Hernes should have known better. And of course, Liverpool will beat Manchester United. As for Man City, we're bouncing back against Hull City tomorrow at lunchtime. 3-1 is my score prediction for Manchester City. The sky is the limit for Majid Waris as well. Now, uh, Brain Adam Collins says that the under-17 women are going all the way to the final. They are going to win against North Korea. There's no way that Bayern Munich can defend their Champions League title. Um, what the Bayern Munich president did is a disgrace to football. He should have been uh, uh, jailed for more than that. Manchester United is going to win against Liverpool by two goals. And uh, glory, glory, man, United. United forever. And Enchibu uh, Isiako also says, shouts to Barcelona for moving to the next stage of the Champions League. Barcelona will beat Osasuna by three goals to nil. As for Manchester United and Liverpool, Liverpool will beat Manchester United by two goals to nil. Go Barca go Ghana. So a lot more of your messages are expected as we go ahead uh, in this show and um, remember it's Nathaniel Atto Citizen Atto on Facebook. Let's also talk about what's happening, uh, more of what's happening in the First Capital Plus Premier League and one person who uh, was there and very key is uh, Dr. K.K. Sapo who is a former CEO of Kumasi Asante Kotoko and he says that his uh, severing of the relationship with Kumasi Asante Kotoko marks his end of uh, football administration. He will not return to football administration. So he spoke to a Kumasi based radio station. Let's take a listen to him. I'll be very really honest with you. So I'm, I'm, I'm growing old. I've turned 60 this year. And that's the time for me to retire from any active business. The consulting, yes, I'll do. But to, to be in management here, uh, let me assure those who fear. That maybe I'll return that there will be no return for KK. That one I can I can say it emphatically. I can use this medium to show everybody to allay the nerves. I mean fears. Relax your nerves. That there will be no return into football management by KK Sapon. That one is not going to happen.
All right, so the ex Kotoko CEO says that's it for him in football management. He will never make a return. What do you make of it? You can uh, place your comments on my Facebook wall, Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Okay, let's also, um, let's also take a look at the uh, fixtures in the... In the First Capital Plus Premier League. And it's um, Bichem United going up against WA All Stars. And Amidal's Professionals play Ediana Stars. That's the interesting game. Now, Ediana Stars uh, will go up against Amidal's Professionals, who have a new coach. And uh, Midyama Essie will play Dwarfs. Uh, Hazakes go up against the uh, Brekum Chelsea and Heart of Lions. They host Inter Allies FC. Liberty Professionals, they host Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And um, Ashanti Gold, who are having uh, issues with maintaining form, are playing new at WBC United. At uh, Kumasi, uh, at the Bayara Stadium, it will be. King Faisal playing Accra Hearts of Oak. All right, so those were the fixtures for you. Uh, what is your prediction for the weekend, uh, in, especially in the Kotoko and the Hearts uh, encounters? Uh, how can Hearts perform against King Faisal in Kumasi? And of course, uh, can Liberty Professionals uh, make any meaningful impact in the game against Asante Kotoko, the defending league champions. Well, let's see how it goes. But you send me your thoughts. Uh, place them on my Facebook wall, Nathaniel Atto Citizen Atto. Remember, now the, uh, the league is sponsored by First Capital Plus. They are the headline sponsors. And the CEO of the First Capital Plus uh, uh, Bank has been speaking to uh, Joy Sports about the association with the league. Let's take a listen to him. The bank, you, you are approached by the one Dr. Markey, and the moment he sold the idea to us, I said, no, that is the way to go. So within four days, and, he, and we have been told by the GFA, that's the fastest response. Uh, I had to organize my management team. I just gave them a psychological boost with a 15 minutes lecture, and they were all fired up. So a paper was produced and we were to have a board meeting within seven days. We produced the paper, we sent it to the board and the board agreed straight away and we gave a positive response and therefore this deal came through. So it was very fast. I think the main aim is to have identified that football, the passion that Ghanaians have, and the fact that we also want to contribute to our quota. But when you have a, when you are sponsoring a passion related thing, then you should know that you are also opening doors. And so, uh, invariably, we are expecting an increase in business, an increase in patronage of our services. We are also expecting our name to be a household name, which has already started. Because if you have somebody like you fits in us, uh, you know where, where we can go. And it, it, the signals are showing. And we also indirectly, we are going to um, enhance some of our electronic products by this linkage. Mm -hmm. And very soon you will see that our gate process, that the football gate process, will be electronically done instead of the you know cash manual the teams will be able to see what is going into the account gfa will be able to see what is going into the account how many people and you can do a lot of statistical analysis and that's going to help us move football to another height When I was a small boy, you know, my father was one of the uh, uh, car owners, you know, those, those days you were a car owner, then you were one of them. and he also liked football. So when I was going, I saw a lot of pictures 
then I saw Kwame Adakwa uh, in Fum, I saw uh, Baba Yara and those things. So I started getting into it. And there was one particular picture that I saw Kwame Nkrumah having taken a picture with the Ghana national team. That was the genesis of my interest in football. And as I grew up and I decided to make decisions on my own, I, I saw that some players have really come through. And we can talk of Abed Pele, Anthony Eboa. These are some of the players um, I admire, and the current ones are also doing well. One of our main objectives is to increase the patronage for Ghana football. So the, uh, the sponsorship, even though it does not directly talk about spectators, we have carved out something for spectators and it's going to be very interesting. We are also going to introduce Best Player Awards wow. in, yes, for each match in very soon. Um, it's something we will even discuss with you because you are going to help us do that. Then we are also going to do some kind of remote, remote um, control assessment of who is the best player of the month and those things. And you, you, you may have to select a panel together with yourself, and you also have to give a portion, a certain percentage to your listening public and your viewing public because they will also be phoning and giving and you'll be taking statistics. At the end of the day, when you put all together, you'll be able to do And so it's going to be a vibrant thing. Yes, for the moment the um, agreement is five years, but uh, like somebody said, travel and see. I'm sure by the time we go to 50% of the duration, GFA itself will be knocking our doors. Look, start planning for the next five years, and Ghanaians will be the uh, voters. And and you see, because we're going to uh, elevate football to another level. Well, the, 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 the future is a model that everybody will look at. Um, I think by and large it's going to remain a wholly owned Ghanaian bank because we believe, believe in indigenous enterprise. Uh, we're going to support indigenous business. And this bank is going to grow to be one of the biggest in Africa and the whole globe. Mm. We, we, we're going to expand beyond the borders of Ghana. We're going to have rep offices offshore in Europe, wherever. Something we've planned already. And it's, in our, it's going to start within this five year strategic plan. And in the next strategic plan, after the five years, you see more of those unfolding. The bank is going to be a household word. All right, so there we are, and uh, you saw the uh, CEO of First Capital Plus, the headline sponsor of the Ghana Premier League. Okay, so that was good. John Kofi Mensah talking about, you know, wanting to even extend the relationship uh, there ahead of time. All right, so um, let's uh, focus on some of the text messages that you are sending. And um, I'll let you achieve 40. Michael says, uh, hi, my, my best man, I love your show. Hearts is winning coming Sunday I love the sports show. Um, let's take another message from Isaac Ahiable. He says, Hearts of Oak will beat Entire Lies 2-0 and Manchester United will beat Liverpool by three goals to one. All right, so um, let's just uh, do another round of commercials and then after that, we get into some more stories. Uh, the Deputy Minister for Youth and Sports has been speaking to Joy Sports and uh, we'll be telling you about the preparations for uh, Ghana's Commonwealth Games. Remember that uh, Ben Nunumensa, the chef de mission, has resigned. He is being uh, convinced to uh, make a return to his positions as uh, chef de mission for the Commonwealth Games and also uh, the uh, treasurer for the Ghana Olympic uh, Committee. Okay, and we will begin a campaign to save an edifice in Accra, a sporting edifice in Accra, which is rotting by the day. And uh, we also build up to the big Soweto Derby in the South African Premier League, as well as NBA highlights and more right here on the show. The reason why you have to stay right there. 
Let me share some more text messages here on the show. And uh, Bright Della Glover says, I can't wait for the London Derby for the Gunners to go to gun down the chickens and uh, the Gunners all the way. Ikechuku Kenneth adjusts says, Manchester United all the way. McDavid Dokwashi uh, writes this one. He says, yes, they are very strong side, but I don't see them winning the cup. He's talking about uh, Bayern Munich. Shimsi Hamaxi says, tax evasion has been a football, has been in the football society for a long time and now I'm happy that Ernest has been jailed and this will make those involved uh, to take greater caution this time. I hope the Black Maidens do well and I'm very, very proud of them. We hope they won't disappoint. Bayern's good form can't be denied, but I tell you not, they haven't met the likes of Madrid and Chelsea. I believe they are oh, the only two teams who can stop them. Good show, Nat. Thank you. Um, I'll be sharing some more of the messages as we go ahead. Let's now take a listen to uh, Deputy Youth and Sports Minister uh, Joseph Yamin, who's been talking about a range of issues, including Ghana's preparation for the Commonwealth Games and the uh, well, Development Games. I uh, received a letter Monday, um, just around the same time. Um, but a shocking letter. I received a shocking letter addressed to the GOC president and a copy to the Minister of Youth and Sports, myself as the, the chairman for the committee, that is the resignation of uh, Bernardo Mensa as the chef of the mission. Um, it's, it wasn't a pleasant news, I mean, looking at the time and um, what is involved. But, um, I, I spoke to both of them, I mean the, chair, the president for uh, the GOC this, this, this morning because the, the letter was addressed to him and um, I've also spoken to Ben Mensa this morning as well to, to get a side of the story. Uh, the assurance is that the GOC will be meeting to take a decision on the, on the resignation of uh, Ben Mensa. And so we are awaiting the outcome of that that uh, meeting. And then uh, we will also make a statement on that. If, if he decides to stand by his uh, decision, no matter uh, how much uh, you may try to coerce him or otherwise, how massive would such a loss of a very important person who has been going back and forth the game's village be to the plans of this year's Commonwealth team? Well, um, it involves a lot. I mean, they share the mission uh, task or uh, mandate. And uh, looking at the time ahead of us, uh, I don't think that we need to start uh, all over again. And so if we are starting all over, it means that we have to do a double work, if not uh, more than double. And so if there are any means of, I mean, uh, averting this, then uh, we should do it. But uh, it's also reasons that are known to our personal to him as a person. And so you cannot force somebody to take a decision and that the person uh, thinks otherwise. And so we are just talking to them to see if there could be some, I mean, issues. I mean, we could resolve this issue and, and, and get the team that is already in motion to continue doing its work. Uh, but if it turns otherwise, we will then have to find a solution to it. Honorable, if I understand what you're saying, then you mean that you've not accepted it to the Me personally, no. Because I, I, I think that the timing is wrong. Uh, personal issues can be resolved as well. And so, I mean, if it's an issue that is, is come up, then uh, there's a possibility or potential of, of of solving whatever problems we are facing now and so the the good thing to do is to try to see if you can solve it and that is what we'll be doing now how personal are these issues i can't be able to put it out there uh, but i think that um, he has raised issues and uh, the issues I, I i believe are issues that can be resolved All right, so this is it. Uh, the issue is being resolved. Uh, ben Nunumensa has uh, put in a resignation letter uh, to quit uh, as 
chefed emission for Ghana's participation in the Commonwealth Games. So in the coming days, we surely are going to hear an outcome of all these days of meeting. And of course, the uh, Chief Sports Development uh, Director of the uh, National Sports Authority has also been talking about preparations for the Commonwealth Games. Entered for Commonwealth Games. Um, we deliberated upon the issues, their concerns, and uh, as a subcommittee, you know, we have to present our report to the main committee for consideration and approval, and that is where we are now. After what transpired in 2011, you particularly uh, was bashed all over. I would want to believe you would want to ensure yeah. that mm -hmm. Glasgow passes off without any issues. Of course. I, um, I like the, your comment. Um, what happened in 2011 cannot happen anymore, and that is why um, I am one of the people who was um, and still is full of joy for the setting up of this International Games Management Committee, which is being chaired by the Deputy Minister. You agree with me that uh, Maputo 2011, one person was making the decision and one person was implementing. He makes the decision and says, hey, go and do this. And uh, we're in a mess because the committee was not there. But today, what one or two people were doing those days is being done by a whole lot of people. So I'm glad this committee will come out with good reasoning for Team Ghana to be well prepared and we shall not have a repetition of what happened in 2011. Do you have a provisional team list that we are taking to Scotland at the moment? Um, well, if you, mean, you say provisional team, you, you mean Team Ghana? Exactly. Yeah, uh, the, the numbers are there that are being considered. So um, I think that it will be... I, I'm going to take the win out of the sale of my larger committee, if I should say something in that direction now. Because, like I said, we have to present our report for consideration and approval. So after it has been approved, then I think it can come out. Finally, your boss has decided to quit. My boss? Our chef de mission has decided to quit at this very difficult time. It's so close to the games. I heard it on the air. I, 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 I'm not sure. Because I, when I heard it, I tried to reach him yesterday. His phones were not true. So um, probably we are for a meeting now. If it is true, um, we will be told. Then probably we can think of our feelings. We don't really need a very short time to put our acts together. I mean, he's been someone who's been going back and forth Scotland to get things right. It's very difficult. Yeah, that is why I'm not believing what you're telling me. Because he's done a lot, and he's, I think he has reached so far. So, if it is true, then it, is, it will be a disaster. Oh, very, very riveting indeed. Uh, a lot of drama and a lot of different angles to the story. Well, it surely will come to an end one day, and uh, we'll see uh, what uh, the courts... Um, decision will be on this matter and um, the verdict uh, is something everybody will be awaiting now uh, a moment of the day uh, there was a Tottenham goal and it surely passes for the moment of the day I will bring it to you in a second but thank you all for staying here remember that the Ghana Premier League is on on Sunday English Premier League action is also on tomorrow and uh, you can follow GFA TV you can also get um, uh, World Series Boxing right here. Uh, Tony Bebley and his team of pundits will be here on your TV screen from uh, 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. tomorrow discussing all the big stories from the week as well. But remember to join George Addo Jr. later today for the football show. And watch this space because there are bigger things coming up as we build up to Brazil 2014. Thanks to the whole production team. My name is Nathaniel Atto and I have love for sport. It was until Christian Eriksen breathed new life into the fixture with a cracking free kick that brought Spurs back to life. An absolutely thunderous free kick from the Danish international who's back in the side and Tottenham are back in the tie.